All right, so how are you guys doing today? Yeah, so uh, we have an uh, exam next week, right? So I assume you guys in uh, Wednesday part. Uh, so a week from today here, we're going to have an exam, okay? So, uh, so from today, I don't know if you guys watched the video on Monday. Uh, we'll do the review. So we'll have a review today, Friday, and this coming Monday as well. So I think there should be plenty of time to uh, just prepare for the exam. Okay. All right. So the uh, start the first one. And I'll give you this one here. And then you can just try to explain what this uh, reaction is. Uh, you can say it's a radical reactions or the polar reactions. And this is the, you know, what's happening. You can draw the like a arrow, what type of arrow you need to draw in here. And By the way, this will be multiple choice. Uh, so you will have more choice anyway. Uh, but it would be great if you could just do it right away without uh, looking at the choice. Uh, so you, you just need to find the, the right statement for this reaction. <clears throat> okay, so is this radical or polar? It's a radical reaction. Okay, so because um, these two chlorine is the same element, so when this is breaking apart, right? So when they break apart, then uh, not, not one of them can have a stronger power possessing these two electrons together. So what happens to this one is they try to get one for each, okay? So this is why I'm drawing this the, like a half head arrow, like fishy hook arrow, because it indicates the only one electron moving on to each chlorine. Because in single bond, as you know, there's two, one pair of electrons. So one goes to here, the other one goes to here. Okay, so this is what it looks like. And then this is why you have a two uh, chlorine with that radical form, which means you only have a one uh, form. Actually, chlorine has what? It always has what? Three won't be already there, and that makes the seven, which is what odd numbers of electron available for this chlorine. So it's just quite unstable. They will move on to the next step of the radical reaction. So if you know this, uh, that would be just a good uh, statement. Okay. <clears throat> okay, makes sense, right? Okay. All right. So move on to the next one. I want you to find the nuclear file and electrophile in this one. So find the electrophile and nuclear file. So yeah, let's do this together. So a nuclear file okay, uh, simply means what? Uh, this is the one that looking for something that is uh, positive. Uh, actually means they're actually looking for not positive but nucleus, uh, which is actually positive. So it's pretty much the same thing. An electrophile uh, means uh, also the uh, same thing but in opposite way. So they're looking for something that is uh, negative or well, actually uh, electric density high reason. Uh, so if you look at this one over here, the double bond is what? One pi bond 
and one sigma bond. So the one in the pi electrons in the P, uh, they can be more easily used for making additional bond because it's uh, on the P. Uh, so rather the one in the sigma bond, the one in the pi bonds, pi electron can be easily used to make another one that looking for what? So this is a very electron rich region here. I'm uh, looking for something that is uh, positive because if you look at this one, hydrogen and bromine, obviously this will have a much bigger force to attract uh, electron density from to this side. And this relative is picking quite electron poor. So this, this part will become your nucleophile, okay? And this is the one that goes to there. So this is very, like, relative speaking, electron poor region, which is just positive. And we'll get to the electron. So they're looking for the electron in here. So this will become electron okay? <clears throat> Later, you have a carbocation ion and the bromine anion also do uh, nucleophile, electrophile, but for that one, you don't have to know because you just need to know what it really uh, works from the beginning. Okay. Does it make sense? So if it's, mm. is any double bond, would that be a nucleophile? Yeah. 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 Most likely. Okay. Especially for this one, uh, because the, once again, the pair of electron on the p orbitals, the pi electrons are, relatively speaking, easier to be used for making additional bond. Yeah. So that's why they actually losing the double bond here. Mm -hmm and they're getting these two. So if I also ask you the exam, what type of reaction is this one? You should say addition, okay? So there's addition, substitution, rearrangement, and the, what was it? Yeah, sub, uh, the elimination, okay? But this will be a good example of what? Addition, uh, using double bond, okay? Sounds good, right? Yeah. Okay. Move on to the next one. <clears throat> okay, so uh, okay, let's try this one. This is a bit tricky. But, uh, okay. This is too much the same. But yeah, so let's get this one. <clears throat> Obviously, addition right there. <clears throat> okay, so uh, let's do this together. Uh, so, what happens to this one is once again, uh, they grab this one over here. Okay? But the, the thing is, the uh, once you grab the pebble electron, grabs this one, okay? and then uh, they either going to add the hydrogen here or here. Right, there are two choices because there the pi electron between these two carbons are grabbing this one. So either they're making put the hydrogen in here, putting the positive charge carbocation on this uh, carbon. They can also do this way. Okay, uh, but they're gonna do uh, this between these two choices. Do you know why? Uh, it's because of the carbocation ion stability. Uh, so if you if you put if you hide, if you put the hydrogen here, you're actually getting the carbocation position here, which is what o only mono or one one carbon right next to the carbocation ion. Uh, so this is uh, unstable. If if you put the carbocation here instead, you have two carbons in neighboring to each other. So that makes this carbocation ion, uh, relatively speaking, more stable than this terminal position here, okay? So hydrogen will be added on here, not here, to give the carbocation position in this carbon, which is more substitute with the carbon. So if it's here, only one carbon na uh, neighboring. If it's here, two carbon can be there, okay? Make sense, right? And then later, 
bromine or when they pick up the hydrogen this all goes to the bromine right and then this all goes to here okay so if you so if you write this one here uh, but you don't have to show the hydrogen right you can imply the hydrogen there uh, this will be only half credit uh, because the this is the right because you followed everything you just follow the better cover Kerang instead of and everything. Uh, but this is a kind of tricky one, but actually they showed the the hydride seat. Okay. Okay. Meaning, uh, so once you had a carbocation position over here, right? Uh, always look for if there's a, if there's any even better place for the carbocation. So this is the mono substitute carbocation position, but this is di, so maybe this is a better position to put the, this bromine here. But if you look at the one over here, it says it's actually a three carbons are neighboring in this position here. And then what it does is they actually move this, the hydrogen and the pair of electron in this bond goes to there. So they actually become this. Because the, this position is even better than this position. Because this position has two carbons are neighboring on this. This position has a three. So this compound wants to have an even better position to put the bromine in. Okay? Bromine anion. Okay? So that's why the bromine anion comes into this and then they become uh, this one. So this will be the best answer. So this will be full credit. If you do the previous one, you can have uh, some credit. Uh, if you put the bromine on here, I really can't give any credit. Uh, this, uh, <clears throat> so this is a tricky one. So I'm not gonna lie, this is a tricky one. Maybe exactly the same question will be on the exam. Okay. I think I'm not gonna change much. Okay, I'm not gonna change much. Okay. All right, so next one. So this is the energy diagram of the chemical reactions. And this is the reactant. And this is obviously the product. And this will be, can you guess what this is, right? It's a transition state. And then uh, you can tell me if this is the indoor or hexagonic reactions, and also this transition state will be resembled to product or reactants. <clears throat> so two things, either if it's exor or uh, in the gun. And tell me uh, if this transition step will resemble to product or more close to reference. That's the, that's the question. Okay, about one minute. <coughs> So uh, is it exo or indoor? Mm. Indoor, perfect, right? Because it's a it's a high in energy in the product, so it actually you know gain energy uh, when when they done with the chemical reaction, perfect. And then the, uh, if you want to find that if your transition state is uh, is close to the form of the product or the reactant, is just look at the distance between these two. Uh, so we're gonna use the the Heyman postulate uh, rule. Uh, so if you guys remember this. Uh, it kind of makes sense that if that transition state is in the similar close to the energy level of a product, that means probably the form, the structure of the transition 
stay also close to the structure of the product as well. Kind of makes sense, right? So if you have something that is in the energy level and this high, and you won't be so close to the form of this one, so far away, uh, but this one. So this is what we call Heyman postulate that we learn in, in chapter six. But anyway, so this is, uh, so in this graph, uh, you can find that two things. If this is ex ex um, exer or intergoning reactions, or is that going to, that transition state will resemble either product or directors by just looking at the, the shape of the graph, okay? Makes sense, right? So this one's product. This product, yes. So uh, if I give you this one, okay? This will be what? Exergonic, right? Because it will be lower in energy in the product side, okay? And then this will be close to what? Reactant, then products, right? So and this will resemble reactants. This is open. Perfect. I can move on, right? <clears throat> Great. All right. Let's so move on to the next one. Oh, okay. okay. So uh, here's a formula. Okay. And then I want you to find uh, the degree of unsaturation. Unsaturation. Normally by hydrogen, right? Uh, so you can find that. There's just some, uh, this is something you can do. Uh, if you have uh, the numbers of a nitrogen, uh, you can do uh, minus one. Okay. If you have uh, oxygen, just ignore. Okay. And if you have numbers of halogens, like chlorine and bromine and so on, uh, just cut as plus one. And plus one. Okay. So uh, in this case, uh, we have uh, two oxygen, but I'm just gonna ignore it. Okay. Because okay, so we can ignore the numbers of oxygen here. You have a one nitrogen, but we're gonna do minus one for hydrogen. So I'm gonna remove the nitrogen and I'll switch to five minus one. So that would be four. Makes sense, right? Okay. And then. Uh, when, when you have a number of a carbon, you just need to have a 2n plus 2, which is uh, where you can have a number of hydrogen will fully saturate the carbon. So in that way, you should have what? 2 times 6 plus 2 will be what? 14, right? 14. But uh, So you should have a 14 hydrogens to saturate the 6 carbons there, but you only have 4. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is the, you should have a 14 hydrogen, but you only have a four based on this rule. So minus four, okay. And you still have to have a 10 hydrogen there, right? And divide that by two, and that's the answer, okay? So just, just try to remember these three uh, rules, okay? And then, get apply those to the hydrogen okay in the formula and if you look at the numbers of the carbon you will be able to know how many hydrogen should be there for saturated fully saturated with six carbons for whatever the numbers of carbon by using 2n plus 2. so we find that for this one it's 14 but you only have a four so you still need to have a 10 hydrogen right more uh, and divide that number by two is the tell you oh this is how Unsaturated this compound is in this degree by dividing this number by two. So, numbers of hydrogen you still need to have more by two is the degree of the unsaturation. Okay. Makes sense, right? Yeah, yeah, we have actually about three more. <laughs> 
So, yeah. Alright, so let's do. This one, okay? So yeah, so this is a halogen here. So I'm gonna treat them as like hydrogen because we're gonna consider them as one hydrogen. So I'll just remove this one and I'm gonna put three over here, okay? So there will be 12, okay? And then now I'll move on to the numbers of carbon. Well, how many hydrogens we need to have to separate this uh, eight carbons. So I'm gonna do two and plus two. So it'll be two times eight plus two. So it will give us 18 hydrogen needed for saturating this compound here. Uh, but unfortunately, we only have 12. So I'm going to do minus 12. And we find out, oh, we need to still have six hydrogens to be uh, there to saturate the co uh, compound. So I'm going to divide this one by 2. Uh, so degree of down saturation will be 3. So let's do one more. Okay, what's the answer? Three. Three, perfect. <clears throat> All right, so just one more, I'll move on. There you go. It won't be happening in the exam. Because I would type it. <laughs> okay, so yeah. So we, I'm just going to ignore this one. So this is 2 nitrogen, so I'm going to do minus 2. So this is the same as 10. But this is 10, so we need to have a 22 hydrogen, right? 2 and plus 2. So minus 10. 12 divided by 2 would be 6. 6, right? Yeah. Alright, so the. Uh, Alright, let's move on to the next one. Okay. You guys name this one. Name this compound. some time because there's a lot of things to uh, consider. Okay. 
All right, let's do this together. Okay. So uh, first of all, what you really need to do is find your base, right? So I'm gonna find your base. Our uh, base is it uh, this carbon here, two, three, four, five. So obviously you know your base is pen, right? Pen. And now you also know there's a double bond. So I'm I'm gonna do with the E N E. Okay. E N E. Because okay. there's double bond somewhere. And you need to locate the where the double bond is. Okay. So uh, so I'm gonna cut the carbon from here. Not here. Do you know why, right? Because you wanna give the lowest possible number for the location of your double bond. But if you cut the carbon from here, this will be one, two, three, four, five. Then uh, there will be the double bond between three and four. So the location will be three because you always choose the lower number between. Uh, but if you cut the carbon from here, one, two, three, four, five, this will be between carbon two and three. So now you can choose two instead of three. If you cut the carbon from uh, right to the left. Make sense, right? Okay. So I'm gonna cut the carbon from here, which is uh, better. So this will be two uh, pentene. You can, uh, like I said before, you can also do pen two in is okay. It doesn't matter. Uh, uh, it's fine by me. It's just a newer, older system, but I don't, I don't really mind. Okay? So anyway, two there, and then what you really need to do is you need to fill your prefix, which is there too, right? So this is a bromo, this is a chloro, but this, this is in alphabetically first. B comes first, then C, right? So I'm gonna put bromo first. It's on carbon number one. So be one bromo. Okay. And what? This is in carbon number two, right? This chlorine. So two, chloro, oops, chloro, okay? So, uh, like I said, one bromo two, two chloro, two pentene is okay. But you can also say one bromo, two chloro, pen, two in is also okay, okay? Doesn't matter. And then uh, you need to do one more, one more, okay? So this is uh, here, okay? So if you look at this one over here, this is uh, in what? Do you have a double bond, okay? So you can try to use E or Z uh, system, uh, system, okay? Do you guys remember this? Okay. So, E and Z, you can do. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna split this one half from the, the double bond, these two carbon, and I'm going to number these two groups. And you're like, what do you mean there's two groups? There's hydrogen there. So it's always implied, but you need to know, oh, there's hydrogen there. Because the, we don't normally show the hydrogen on the uh, <coughs> structure, okay? But we do have a hydrogen over here. And then uh, you can just number this one, by first the same, okay? So this one is obviously what? This is a carbon, hydrogen. Which one is a high in atomic number? Carbon four. So it will be one and two. So pri priority for this side, it will be one, two. Because hydrogen is very low in atomic number, right? So it will be one, two. How about this one, okay? So you, know, you look at the bromine, right? Bromine is very high in atomic number than chlorine. So I'm gonna do one and two. Am I right? So bromine is high, high in atomic number, right? So I'm gonna do prioritizing this one, one and two. Am I right? No, why not? Six is carbon. This, this is carbon. So you don't see there is carbon there, right? So you're actually comparing not chlorine to bromine, but chlorine to carbon. So it's actually one and two, okay? So if that is the case, your prioritized groups are across to from your double bond, right? Not on the same side, they're across, right? So we call this, if it's across, one, one, two, two is across from the double bond, it's called E, etadigan. This is the juice element. So etadigan means it's on the opposite side from the, so we, E, 
one bromo two chloro pen two in or two pentin. Okay. <coughs> okay, makes sense, right? Okay. Okay. All right. So this. Uh, so this is a, a polymer. And I want you to find out the, what might be the monomer for this polymer. Okay? So obviously, uh, it's arkin. Okay? It's a type of arkin. They do radical reactions, but chain growth. Uh, so they can eventually make the polymer structure. So I'll tell you the trick. Okay, I'll tell you the trick. Uh, whenever I show you the polymer like this, uh, or you can always try to find the one that on the this chain, carbon chain, which is this one, right? Okay. So find this one, and you just need to uh, remove these two. Okay. And put the double bond there. That's the answer. Okay. So this is a trick. Uh, so if you have a, something on your carbon chain from there keep just one more carbon and erase the, the other two bond and put the double bond there that's the trick okay so yeah this will be quite easy way to so for this one the same right same okay so what happens is they go to ready corrections So this is how they make the polymer, right? So in that way, uh, you can just, uh, I'll show you one more, okay? So if you have, uh, for example, this one, okay. same. So just find the one that on the carbon chain and just delete the two bonds between and put the double one there. That's the trick you can do. Make sense, right? Okay. Same. Okay. So this will be more normal. Okay. All right, I'll give you just one more to just 100% sure. Maybe you can try this one. this point. So pretty much the same, right? So I'm gonna keep this one here, and I'm gonna raise this two. There you go. Okay. So this is your one. Make sense, right? All right. So far so good. I mean, we we still have a uh, two more review session uh, from today, so uh, we can uh, still have quite enough time. Okay. Try this one.
Okay, so let's try this one. Did you, guys, did you guys get it? This one? Okay. So uh, what happens to this one is the uh, when they these two interact with each other, uh, maybe you guys remember this. Uh, sort of, th they form like this. Uh, and then uh, once again, uh, as you, we already learned in the beginning, this can be easily attacked, uh, this one, the carbon. Uh, because if you look at the carbon here, because it's iodine, there's an electron pore. So, and then this will grab this, the pebble electron. This is a uh, halogen. Uh, but from here, carbon is weaner, because this is what metal. So you can't compete with the taking electron. So actually the carbon takes this one to, okay. So that becomes what? Okay. So uh, then uh, this one becomes anion. This one become here, right? And they, they just pay off. So later they just, and there's this uh, uh, But um, uh, well, obviously we just need to know what's the product on all these uh, compounds. Okay, makes sense, right? All right. Be the last one today. We we still have uh, enough time uh, for review, uh, so I'm not gonna do too much at once. But yeah, you can try this one. This still will take some time actually, uh, so maybe two minutes. <clears throat> there, more, there will be multiple choice, so yeah. Once again, the, what happens to this one is the, the boring uh, comes into this position, okay? Uh, because this is a very spacingly, uh, there's some problem there for space because of this. Group. So they want to come in this side, not this. Okay, so if they come in this side, they will conflict with this uh, method group here. So they want to come in the less uh, bulky, space, the more open space in this way. So then they form like this type of thing, okay? And then eventually they do this, okay? So meaning, meaning is what? They're coming on the same side, same side, meaning what? On the same side. So if that is the case, and this will be replaced by hydrogen peroxide. Actually, this is the one that goes there and replace. Uh, I, yeah, I showed the mechanism before. I'm not going to do it today. But this will be replaced by what? Wait. Uh, so it is important that you, this hydrogen and hydroxyl groups coming in the same side. That's why I put it in here, okay? So if I give you this as a choice, this will be wrong answer, okay? Because the, your hydrogen and the hydroxy group are on the opposite side. But when you use a boring, uh, because how they approach to the compound, arcane, the cyclic arcane, uh, that has to be on the same side. So meaning, 
if I give you the question like, This, this is also correct, okay? Because you're just looking at the, the other side, okay? Either they're going on the same side, it's okay. Okay. All right, so that's it for today. And then, uh,